hello everyone welcome back to another special request tutorial so this here this is what I am going to do you can see uh, three counters in the top left corner top left time and the session time and the total jumps so here what I am doing is total time represents the old play time that I have played this game so this would be saved between multiple sessions so you can use this feature to record the total time a player has played played your game um, and the next one is session time that means after starting the game at this time how much time he has played game played the game so yeah and the total jumps mean throughout his gameplay his all the gameplay in his lifetime in this game how many times that player has jumped so you can see on each jump that counter is increasing so if I stop playing this game and play again now you can see I already have total play time of 2 minutes and the total jumps 17 and also the current session time is 10 because it always starts from 0 each time I start playing so now please note that we have 2 minutes and 38 so I am going to stop at 2 minutes 45 so in the next time we will be starting from 2 minutes 45 seconds see so yeah that's what I am going to show you today and this episode is sponsored by this generous this generous patron thank you very much for your support all right let's start with an empty game with a new project I'll use the third person shooter kit template I don't need the starter content let's create a new folder and new project I'll name this as record play record create all right so this is the map this is what we have at the moment right and uh, now I don't need this some okay now let's go here as usual let's create a folder for blueprints as BP and here let's create a new blueprint and let's call it game instance now, uh, let's create a child class of game instance I'll call it game ins as code like me and in the settings I'll assign the newly created game instance instead of the default one okay uh, nothing happens still so in the game instance I'll do this okay now here in the game instance we have this init event and the shutdown event so this event init event will be called when we start the game so I'll print a start and another print here I'll call it and to see that let's see now we go to the start in the top left corner and it's gone now and if I press ESC you can see end is there all right so right now here I'll get time oh 
should I get it? Get real time seconds. Returns time in seconds since the world was brought up for play. Does not stop when game pauses. Okay, let's get this one. Get time seconds. And I'll promote this to a variable. I'll call it start time. And then I'll have another variable here. <laughs> like this promote to variable I'll call it end time all right so maybe we yeah let's create a widget to show the total time current sessions time and total jumps so something like that to show so all right here user interface widget blueprint wdg counters okay let's drag and drop a text block mm -hmm. position let's say 100 x and 100 y size 300 y size 50 all right let's call this uh, txt total time and let me copy paste this two times let's set this one y position what's the position here okay 100 100 right then this one 100 400 No, 200. No, 150. Yeah, that's all right. Let's increase the width a little bit. 600. Position X hundred, position Y two hundred. Sorry, position Y two hundred. Okay, so this is total time, and this is. current session time and this is total jumps all right uh, now let's create this widget here We need a player. Will that be a problem if I prefer player here? I'm not sure. Let's see. Add to because I think game instance is created before other things. So I'm not sure. Let's see. Yeah, they are not showing up. 
okay so we can't do it here okay so let's create another blueprint class extending from the HUD I'll call it HUD HUD like me and here we have a begin play and let's create widget from the type of counters player controller to viewport now let's set this one as our hard right now we got the widget displayed okay now in the hard in the event tick uh, let's promote this to a variable. Let's call it counters and set it. Now in the tick, get the counters set tx, not txt. Can't I access them? of this I should mark these as variables and then let's create a custom event here update counters uh, let me rename this first total time this is session time and this is jump count get the total time and set text set text should be a I'll define a new input here in the type of um, how float I'll call it total time seconds um no maybe this could be a problem because if I store in seconds I will run out of the max amount I can hold in a float variable I'm not sure actually so let's get this as an string uh, no actually it wouldn't be a problem yeah so why does this has to be a float it can be integer because Wait, let me check. Ah, it is a float. But I think it's better to get it as an integer. It would be easier. Total time seconds. Alright. Now, how to get the number of seconds here? Well, actually, see. Divide this by 60. So, this gives us the number of seconds and will not divide the modulus 
then divide this by 60 this gives us the number of minutes and then get the modulus of this from 60 so this gives us the actual number of minutes so this is like total number of minutes except uh, including hours so this is m this is nothing i don't need that how to delete it i'm not sure how to delete the, uh, delete the comment and then here divide this by 60 so this gives us the number of hours h append total time we can now convert this to a text like this total time leave any space this is hours let's add a h and this is minutes let's add m and this is seconds let's add s okay so let's go to the high update counters for now i'll give get time seconds i'll give this one as the input just to test if the counters are working yeah seconds are working let's wait until to see the minutes are working I'll stop post recording right seconds and minutes are working okay that would be enough for now okay so that's total time similarly we can get <coughs> the session time as well at another parameter i call it session time get the txt session time text let's call it session time Now for this also uh, at the moment I have to give this but first uh, how to store the total time oh well uh, let's go here and okay let's create a save game object we need to keep 
the amount of time that we have played sw counters sv counters okay let's add a variable and the type of integer oh i'll call it total time And I'll create a new for the new uh, another variable for total jumps as well. Okay, now here or oh, not in the heart in here. me add a new custom event oh we don't need an event let's try this load game from slot the slot name is let's make letter of the string counters I'll keep using the x as 0 and if this is valid yeah we need to check this too branch if this exists then we have to load we can load it and then we can shall we promote this to uh, oh no we can cast this to SV counters then promote to variable I'll call it SV counters right so if we don't have one create save game object in the type of SV counters and then save game to slot like this then Let's add a small delay. And go back here. Okay. Now From the I don't need this from this one we can get time seconds and also jumps we can get the jumps as well
then let's promote these two variables uh, what should I call this reported time recorded jumps okay now here when I shut down I'll do this get the recorded time and add to that uh, end time minus start time add it to the recorded time and also jumps I am not updating yet then get this one set record total time the jumps also I need set total time seconds like this and compile oh and save game to slot slot name is this one count as an object is sv count as okay just to test if this is working let's print the recorded time here so it should be increasing now we got zero and we played four seconds five seconds six seconds now next time we should get six right we got it now we played another four seconds now we should get 10 all right we got it okay then let's go to our HUD and here in the begin play get game instance well I usually don't do casting uh, I use interfaces so let's do that here also why shouldn't I API game instance code like me get total now get recorded time output should be integer now in the game instance let's add that interface ppi game instance code like me Oh, wait uh, zero there okay now here we have that function I defined in the interface so here let's return 
or maybe we can rename this to get recorded counters so I can return both jumps as well All right, now in the hard, we can get counters like this. I promote this as recorded time recorded jumps now for the total time I'll get this one and a plus I'll add recorded time and give that for the total time seconds now when I play you can see I already have 13 seconds and the total time and if I stop and play it starts from 80 now it should 20 so you can see I'm storing total time and the second one shows the current sessions time okay so that part is done now the next part is also let me show you where this save file is created it is created in the saved save games here counters.sav uh, but this uh, location will be changed once you have built the game um, it will go to the default save game location uh, but now we are in the editor it will that would be the location okay now about jumps so here in the bpi game instance i'll add a new function at jump and in the game instance it doesn't have any inputs outputs save okay now In here, I'll call a jump event like this. Then I'll get the recorded jumps and do a plus plus increment. Okay, now in the well, let me add the jump count as well as an input jump get the total weight total jump count txt jump count and set text
well if I do it like this it would be wrong no it is not wrong but I have to every time I update I have to get the jumps from the game instance get game instance so here we need another method get jump count no we already have get recorded counters get some space get count recorded counters get jumps from here so yeah this part is redundant now what's there All right. Okay. Now, in the third person character, when I jump, I have to do this. Get game instance. Add jump. okay now we got one jump two jumps three jumps four jumps and let's stop and yeah we already have four jumps when i start playing the game okay oh i forgot one more thing we should This is not the way to do it. Append string and this is total jumps, then number of jumps like this. Okay. Now we have it. Right, so everything is working, and this is what I wanted to show. That's all. Uh, that's all for today. So even if we have multiple levels, multiple maps, uh, we have implemented this most of save and load things of the for the counters in the game instance so it wouldn't be a problem so even with multiple levels this system will work the counters will be updated properly and thanks for watching so if you like to support my work you can get the membership of my patreon club the link would be in the description below and thanks for watching again see you in the next episode also this project files will be available through patreon page so see you in the next episode goodbye